AI is a powerful tool. This summit can help ensure that artificial intelligence charts a course that benefits humanity and bolsters our shared values. Welcome to AI for Good the leading action-oriented, global and inclusive United Nations platform on AI. Organized by ITU, in partnership with 40 UN sister organizations, and co-convened with Switzerland. The goal of AI for Good is to identify practical applications of AI to advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and scale those solutions for global impact. In today's session, we're counting on you to use the live video wall feature to ask questions and post comments to help create an engaging discussion. We encourage you to stay until the end to chat, connect, ask questions, and network with our distinguished panelists and world-class AI experts in the neural network. It is now time to kick off the session and welcome our first speaker. The floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, welcome to this week's session of AI for Good, machine, Accelerating Climate Science with Machine Learning. It's um, my pleasure to introduce Professor Jingjia Liao. Um, Jingjia is a director for the Institute of Climate and Applications Research and the Institute for AI and Meteorology at Nanjing University in China. Um, he's previously held appointments at the Australian Weather and Climate Research in um, the Bureau of Meteorology there in Australia. Um, as well as in the Research Institute for Global Change in the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology in Japan. It's my great pleasure to um, welcome him here today to talk about the use of machine learning, uh, machine deep learning indeed, for climate forecasts. Thank you very much, Xing Zhao. Uh, after, over to you, and please feel free to share your slides and start when you're ready. Okay, thank you, Dukan. I just just a moment I share my screen. Of course. Can you see my slide? That looks uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you um so much for the invitation. It's a great honor. Um so as um so in the talk, I'm going to show something like introduce some uh, our listeners is only using machine deep learning for climate forecast. Um, uh, is, so we know in the, the AI concept was proposed in 1950s. So now actually uh, 60, 70 years past. Um, with recent years within the development of deep learning algorithm, uh, the AI method has been applied to many areas of ocean and atmosphere science, including the phenomenon detection like tropical cyclone, typhoon, uh, intensity estimate, uh, location identification, and also bushfire uh, identification, uh, cloud type identification, those things. And also include many like applications to forecasts, including weather forecast, uh, like uh, extreme rainfall forecast and climate forecast, uh, any new in the ocean type or all the climate phenomena forecast, and also ocean waves, uh, coastal 
um, storm and ocean environmental forecast. And uh, in recent time, because China has um, put a lot of uh, efforts to try to reduce CO2 emission, and there's a big um, development in renewable energy, so like wind power and the solar power. So there's a lot of uh, uh, kind of application in AI to forecast uh, this wind, uh, this uh, energy. Uh, energy kind of production and uh, market price. And also we know uh, uh, this, um, uh, when we do forecast, that's kind of, uh, uh, we need to develop kind of data simulation uh, method, which cost, which cost much like ensemble computer for Diva, which cost, uh, uh, cost uh, require too much computation top powers. And also there's some like, uh, we know that in the early decades, there's a missing of observation data. So now AI has been applied to do like a data construction uh, and uh, data reconstruction and also uh, that kind of uh, uh, replace those uh, uh, kind of uh, um, very cost um, kind of uh, data assimilation method. And also, um, in recent years, um, also some people are trying to use AI to approximate the uh, PD, like, um, um, and also try to develop kind of uh, um, scheme, AI scheme to replace the subgrid scale parameterizations, which can um, largely affect the model uh, performance. And also, we know uh, the model, like dynamic model, now is of, of course, has. Uh, uh, play as a kind of a popular law for researchers and the forecast, but dynamic model has kind of a, has caused resolution and a lot of uh, um, bias. So we can also use an AI to to correct the model bias and the downscaling. So in, in this talk, we are going to show you uh, a few examples using AI for climate forecast, particularly in tropical climates, and also uh, for bias correction and a downscaling of our model forecast. So well, as people, a lot of people know the ANSO is the biggest uh, climate uh, phenomena which can cause a large impact, um, disaster, uh, weather extremes uh, in the world uh, wide and also impact the environment and the global field. So that's why a lot of people, uh, institutions trying to develop an ANSO forecast a method to improve the climate forecast in the areas. So also in, in, in Nanjing also we develop kind of a um, dynamic model forecast. So we issue um, the ANSO and the tropical climate forecast every month up to two years lead. And also the ANSO forecast is a big issue in the world community. And like in um, uh, USA II, um, they collect a lot of uh, products, real-time for uh, real-time ANSO products uh, based on dynamic model and uh, statistic model. You can see actually statistic statistic model shows a kind of comparable result with the dynamic model. So in so we using um so a few years ago as a first study we use kind of a well developed AI a deep learning method called a convolutional neural network CNN. And we, we, we're using kind of a slightly old slash with function, a hyper, hyperbolic uh, tangent function as a uh, slash function. And also we use a kind of a typical Lanet 5 structure. So we have three layer convolutional layers and, and also um, four connection uh, to connect the four predictors, the, the pattern of predictors with uh, our like ANSO index forecast uh, predictor terms. That's a very simple, um, uh, like our, our first uh, uh, try to using machine learning, deep learning to to do climate forecast. And we know CNN has been uh, really good at uh, like face recognition and uh, self-driving cars. Uh, so we need, you need to um, um, did, uh, like look, um, recognize the, the, what's the uh, ob obstacles in from the car. And also for image recognition in the, in the photo pictures, there are a lot of different objects. So CNN can help us to identify different objects. That's a very efficient uh, method. And using CNN, actually we build our 
ANSU forecast model. So we for for all uh, statistical model, um, we we need to uh, um, decide the political terms. So based on our uh, knowledge, like ANSU is is mostly influenced by ocean memory. So we select upper ocean uh, 300 meter heat content as ocean memory. So it's a uh, as previous three months um, like global heat content in up of 300 meters. And also we select a global SAT uh, sea surface temperature as a, another predictor. And we use a LANET um, uh, structure, but because the, the, we know that deep learning usually require a big data set to support it for training, but, uh, but the observation data only like, even you have 100 years data, but also happen like every few years. So we only have like 40, 50 samples. It's too small to training um, uh, kind of uh, uh, CNN model. So in this case, we using kind of data transfer learning, a method using a semi five like 30 models and many members were now for past 100 years um, historical simulations. So we can um, actually have uh, like uh, 10,000 more uh, years of data set to, as an input to train the model. So we know now the Dali model has good performance in simulate ANSO uh, features, but also has some bias. So this kind of uh, similar to observation, but has some not a real data sets for training, right? So this kind of data, data transfer learning. We, so we're using like simplified 5 historical law as a first input of training the model. And then we're using kind of uh, observation data as uh, ocean reality data for past 100 years to re re uh, retuning, refine, uh, 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 refining um, the AI model. And then we're using the, uh, the built uh, AI model to forecast the past like uh, uh, 30, uh, 40 years uh, in the event. This is high cause uh, on test. So this is the result. So now you can see the X, uh, this, this uh, shows the correlation scale at lead time from one month to up to 12, 24 months, so two years lead. And you can see there's several dynamic models, including seven models from North America um, ensemble project. And the blue, mod, blue line shows our um, dynamic model up to two years ahead. And you can see the uh, the red line is from a CNN model. You see the up to 12 months ahead, you, you don't see much difference in the scale from our model. But if we beyond that, particularly you see like uh, eight, at 18 months, so the, the, uh, the CNN model actually pretty, pretty much high scale than our tiny model. And also we know the answer has um, kind of phase transition during springtime. So it's uh, from any new to La Nina or La Nina to any new. So during the phase transition, the signal is small, it's weak and very hard to predict. So many tiny model has big problem in forecasting answer transition phase. But now if you're using the deep learning model, we can see actually the, the answer transition phase can be well forecast up to 10, 11 months ahead. That's the big uh, advantage of the um, deep learning model. And also we compare with the, the normal like uh, machine learning, so without deep learning, uh, machine learning, so like uh, um, feed forward neural network, neural network is kind of a uh, popular machine learning method. You can see the skill is quite low compared with the deep learning method. That suggests the deep learning actually can much better capture uh, the relationship between the predictors and the predictors and the predictors better, uh, better high um, skills. And, uh, and later we, because the, we only use the net five um, structure only have three layers in conclusion. So it's kind of a shallow, shallow model, not very deep. So we now later we, we use the uh, ResNet kind of uh, uh, model, we can now extend the three layer up to 14 layers. So we can uh, um, better e um, extract more kind of uh, uh, fundamental features. And also we use more variables, like with certain, certain uh, predictors, but because uh, for each lead time, the each uh, variable's contribution to ANSO is different. So now we actually, we build the two form, more, uh, uh, blocks. One is the future filter. We select the best, uh, the key uh, predictors, and then using the selected predictors, 
and input the forecast model and uh, forecast the, and produce the answer forecast. So that's kind of a little bit of a deeper um, layer uh, model. So this is a result. You can see actually the blue line is um, uh, is original CNN model, and the red line is the as a new uh, we call the Taylor uh, resonant model. You can see actually the Lutomi square uh, is uh, measures the model forecast error is getting smaller, and the uh, correlation scale is getting higher. So getting improved up to twelve months ahead. And uh, so far we using kind of convolutional um, method. Convolutional method is uh, good at uh, um, detecting the uh, feature, regional features for image kind of detection. Uh, but we know the answer has a kind of a, a climate phenomenon has a long memory in the temporal uh, direction, right? So we also use kind of a, like a language uh, method like ASTM, uh, INN, but now we, people use a transformer to better um, deal with the kind of a language problem. Um, so, so we also try to use a, a kind of a convolutional class AOS team. So in this model, we can, um, can uh, is able to uh, capture both regional kind of uh, features plus uh, temporal kind of memory. So uh, we did a kind of a test and we found the, the, the answer forecast skill getting a little bit better. And just three months ago, we published another paper using um, uh, kind of developed kind of a multitask model for um, in the ocean type of prediction. So in this model, we again, we, use, we select some like uh, variables as predictors, but in the structure, so we add channel attention. So the channel attention actually help us to extract the most important uh, signal like uh, before we using um, uh, uh, kind of uh, um, we we design um, a separate block to select the key variables, but within the channel attention, actually, the automatically can help us extract the best um, mo most important um, signals, and then also uh, we using um, uh, spatial attention. So that spatial attention actually tell us where the phenomena is. Uh, most important. So with the attention can help us uh, better to capture most important signals and uh, most important areas. Um, also we add a kind of uh, ASTM and in um, before we, we build a, each model for like a single task. So we build an AI model for ANSO forecast, but now we're using uh, this, we build this multi-task uh, model can, that can uh, forecast many Many phenomena like IOD index indices and answer index and other things you, you can in, include. So the, the, the good things of this uh, uh, multi, uh, multitasking model is actually we know in the re reality the in the ocean at uh, Pacific has a very strong interbasin coupling. So what happened in the ocean can influence Pacific and uh, the Pacific signal can influence in the ocean. So in this framework, actually can this in the basin coupling can be well, uh, better uh, captured in the model. So this is uh, again, the, uh, the forecast. So up to four, 15 months a lead. So you compare with 14 dynamic model, the red line again from the multitasking air model, you can see the, at, at most of uh, lead time, the, the skill of from AI model is, is the best. And also the Lutomi square error is, uh, is the smallest. So the skill is compared with many like uh, operational centers like uh, UK, NCEP, um, uh, EC, like uh, those, um, you can see the, the AI model actually produce better skill in, uh, in forecast the, the four um, in the ocean type, which is the peak season in the September, November, uh, October, November. And also we compare with the other IR model, you see that our build AR multitask model produce the best uh, skills. And not only can AR model can improve the forecast scale, but also can use the AR model to improve our understanding of the uh, like uh, climate um, predictabilities. 
Like for example, at three months lead, like uh, we we look at the positive IOD event and negative IOD event. You can see the the heat map actually shows the similar things. Both once is a signal in the Western Pacific is is very important because it's work cell actually connect both in the ocean and and the Pacific. And other one is uh, the Australian high. So when Australian high is getting stronger, there's a stronger cross uh, equator flow that's actually uh, help uh, trigger the uh, IOD uh, uh, occurrence. But if we at the 12 months, did you see the clickers are getting much different for positive IOD and negative IOD. For negative IOD, we basically see the tropical Pacific signal is, get, uh, is most important. So you see like from any new uh, transfer La Nina. So the, the previous uh, any new is kind of good precursor for next year negative IOD. But if for the positive IOD, you see the North Pacific signal getting much much important. So we know the North Pacific can actually influence uh, the tropical El Nino through like a footprint uh, mechanism. So that's actually you see that actually in tropical area, there's a central Pacific El Nino followed by Eastern Pacific El Nino, there's double El Nino. So that's actually tells us like uh, the precursor at 12 months lead for positive IOD, negative IOD is, is, un, is not the same. So there's non-linearity. So actually AI model can help us to better understanding the non-linearity of the IOD predictability. And also because IOD usually happen in the uh, body spring and during summer. And we we'll look at the spring, you'll see, again, you see, the, uh, uh, in the, we also look at the, the Western Indian Ocean and Eastern Indian Ocean index, you see the IOD and the AI model is basically produces the best, uh, the highest skill. And then we'll also look at the spring and the summer during IOD evolution. Also, you can, you see the skill from, uh, from AI model is, is best compared with the 14 dynamic models. Uh, and now we're also using AI to issue real-time forecast. So this uh, this year, 2023, uh, uh, in the summer, we can, and for we see probably there's a, a kind of a, a weak positive IOD event may happen. Actually, this is consistent with our dynamic, dynamic model forecast. So this all uh, for, a tropical climate, and also because we're living in uh, mid latitude land, right, continent. So if we look at the rainfall, uh, you see that in the tropical areas, the rainfall forecast is very high because the tropical area, the ARC coupling very strong. The, the atmosphere, uh, the rainfall is mostly determined by sea surface temperature. But if you look at the East Asia or other area like uh, America, the skill is very, very lower. So that's actually a big challenge. In now using dynamic model or uh, like a traditional linear uh, status model to to improve the uh, rainfall forecast in, in, in the subtropical areas. And so we, we had some uh, kind of uh, a kind of early study and we tried to use an AI to to uh, to build a, a forecast model for uh, East China summer rainfall forecast. And we, we, we build a kind of a two-step unit model. It's a deep learning. Before all the model we use, we're using a kind of a field as a predictor to forecast our index, right? But now we can use unit to uh, you, uh, you, uh, using a, a field as, as input to uh, output a, a field. So that's kind of special pattern we can uh, can directly forecast. So that's, uh, that's very good for uh, for rainfall, like a special pattern of rainfall forecast. So we use it, we, we develop a kind of two-step mo unit model. One for the first step, we use all the predictors like uh, SAT, heat content, or uh, atmosphere circulation to forecast the atmosphere circulation in the eastern um, uh, in the Western Pacific. And then we use the, uh, the forecast um, so atmospheric circulation and build using another uh, unit model to forecast rainfall. That's kind of two step, not one step. And, and the reason why, because the rainfall is very stochastic and nonlinear. So it's very hard to using a kind of uh, um, uh, kind of stacks model to directly um, Pre forecast rainfall. So actually we tested this. So this is um, 
the yellow is kind of uh, is one step, which is we using we built just only one model uh, to forecast directly rainfall, and the red one is two step. You can see scale is much high compared with uh, one step. Also, we 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 verify a, the model if we input the uh, observed um, atmospheric circulation and actually can very good uh, forecast the rainfall in the, in the eastern China. So that's actually is the model actually can well capture the real world uh, dynamical link between the atom circulation and the rainfall. And so this is a result. So we can see during the uh, past four year, 40 years, the spatial pattern of the rainfall in the eastern China actually varies. Right, the, some years the special distribution of rainfall anomaly can be well forecast because very strong influence from any new or other external forcing. But some years the skill is very bad because of like tropical cycle is weather event, uh, atmosphere internal variations influence getting larger, become larger. So it's very hard. But usually, so you see that uh, AI model getting a little bit better compared with the dynamical. This is a North American model. But if we look at the regional uh, average time series uh, rainfall, you see 2020 is a big flood in the eastern China. And you see the, the red line is from the AI model. You can see the, uh, the scale is, is, is highest compared with uh, our dynamic model and also North American model. And also look in the, in the East China, we know that's uh, um, there's very strong intra-seasonal oscillation because uh, uh, the uh, May front can stay in one, one area and then suddenly jump to another place. So as I actually you look at the June, July, uh, June, July, August each month, you see the skill actually from AI is much higher compared with the dynamic, model, dynamic models. So it's actually, uh, it seems like the AI actually can better capture those like, uh, um, non kind of interested in variation in, in the East China uh, rainfall. And as shown before, because we are now, we develop our dynamic model is a kind of operational model and forecast the, uh, the rainfall and like all, all temperature in, in the world. But in China, is China government has much uh, pay much attention to the summer rainfall forecast because it caused a lot of uh, uh, problem to the societal and uh, econ economical development. So we can see, so we 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 see like 2020 is uh, uh, Yangtze River has um, flood. Uh, we, we we forecast that it's wet, but it's it's actually very extreme flooding. So the, the dynamic dynamic model cannot. Uh, capture this extreme event. And the last year is actually extremely hot and uh, dry uh, summer. As the model can forecast a little bit, but very much, uh, uh, much bias exists. So now we can actually using uh, AI to correct the model bias and also downscaling. So our dynamic dynamic model has like 100, 100 kilometer resolution, but the observation will have like quarter uh, degree. So we can actually, um, using AI to downscaling, uh, and also we can use uh, to correct the model bias. So here we use two ways. One is deterministic way because in CMA actually they forecast like um, uh, whether this summer will be wet or dry in deterministic manner. So actually we try to actually improve this de de deterministic uh, forecast skill. But of course we know. All the tropical areas, the rainfall is very chaotic. So actually, we should use kind of probabilistic way to um, issue the forecast. And uh, so we also develop kind of uh, AI method to improve the probabilistic forecast um, uh, results. So this is the kind of a little bit details. So for deterministic way, we actually use an automatic encoder. So we learn. Uh, the the model the bias in the model forecast rainfall. So we know uh, the rainfall bias actually has what uh, dry bias and wet bias. So it's uh, the the distribution is kind of a cost, uh, Gaussian. So it's it's easy to build a model to learn the Gaussian distribution, and we're using a, a kind of uh, auto encoder to learn the uh, the model bias in the rainfall forecast, and then we use the ResNet to build a relationship between the model forecast, uh, those uh, atmospheric circulation, uh, surface temperature, 
and with this uh, bias in the rainfall. And then we use the uh, decoder to get the final uh, the bias and plus original forecast, we can get a correct uh, um, forecast of uh, rainfall. So this is a deterministic way. And uh, in uh, probably this way, we actually use uh, um, condition, um, conditional validation of um, encoder. This is kind of a normal popular way uh, for actually can help us to build like enlarge the number of ensemble members. So we, we are then dynamic one only have nine members, okay, we can extend to um, uh, 100 members. So can it's, just, it's better to issue the properties forecast. So for the conditions, we actually use our forecast um, like those um, field anomaly, like those um, atmosphere and uh, temperature anomaly, and as a condition to um, get those 100 uh, members of the uh, correct forecast. So this is the result. So uh, this is a um, skill at each, at each grid uh, based on original dynamic model. So you see some area skills are good, some area actually very bad. So this is the square. So you see uh, the Southern China actually, the, the rainfall variation is large, but also the area forecast area is also large. So um, usually the operation actually you use kind of uh, a UF a stationary way, uh, a method to correct the model bias. And you see actually the skill actually getting worse and the bi model bias getting larger. And also we know uh, the model because the cost resolution actually is very hard to uh, reproduce kind of strong daily rainfall. So usually we can use a quantum mapping to correct the um, uh, PDF of the uh, rainfall. And it's actually, you see, we didn't find a much skill improvement, and also you see the bias actually error getting much larger. But if if we're using our AI um, correction model, you, you see best, particularly you see a lot of areas the skill is getting better, and in, in the error is getting also reduced. So you particularly from probably this forecast way, and also we we also build another unit simple standard unit model, you see some, the, the, the result getting a little bit improved, but it's not, not as good as um, our dynamic uh, probabilistic and deterministic way. So this is the uh, um, painting correlation. So we try to measure the skill in predicting a spatial distribution of the rainfall. So from 2010 or 2020 is a test period. You see the dynamic model actually is basically the 10, 11 year average is about zero. But if you're using UF and quantum mapping, it's getting worse. Now, if we use an AI model correcting, you can the, the, the skill in predicting the spatial uh, distribution of uh, precipitation anomaly is getting better. But of course, still very little because it's very hard to forecast those uh, uh, the rainfall in the extropical area, but it's, you see that did get some improvement. And if we look at the probabilist forecast, because now we have 100 members. So if you look at the kind of, we can have three different categories, wet and normal and dry. Particularly for wet and dry, you see the scale is getting much higher compared with uh, the original dynamic model. So you see uh, that's actually a very good um, encouraging is architecture can um, uh, use AI to improve the uh, probabilities forecast. So that's our um, future direction. We, we, we are going to build a kind of probabilities forecast to better uh, represent the uh, real world and for better forecast. And also we're using a, a kind of a CNN model and um, uh, to correct our model forecast in East Africa is against rainfall. We're also doing um, more, uh, bias correction and downscaling to one quarter degree. So again, you can see for extreme um, events, so this 98% uh, is very extreme wet uh, events. Uh, you see the, the dynamic model actually cannot forecast um, the uh, intensity, but after the correction, you, you can see much better, very close to observation. And also you see the um, probably forecast skill um, is also getting um, higher compared with the original 
a dynamic model. So that's actually two good uh, successful example using AI to correct and downscaling the dynamic model forecast. And, and in addition, also we tried to uh, because in in the Arctic uh, the, uh, with global warming, the Arctic sea has decreased very quickly. So there's a um, lot of governments actually uh, pay more and more attention to to uh, uh, Arctic kind of uh, transport, uh, ocean transport, uh, and uh, some other activities. So we uh, we build a kind of uh, ASTM network, um, and to and plus a simple attention mechanism and to forecast each grid point, each month, the sea ice uh, cover. And you can see the scale if compared with the ECMWF, the dynamic model, is the, this is root mean square error. So it's uh, more, almost uh, very similar. So the red line is our AI model. It's getting some months getting better than, uh, than the dynamic model. And of course, very much better compared with the climate more climatology forecast and persistent forecast. So that's actually um, also shows the kind of uh, um, uh, good performance of AI in competing with dynamic model in CIS forecast. And also, we try and use AI for ocean wave forecast. We know now this a uh, world trend through ocean is getting um, developed more and more, and this. Uh, become more important, but the ocean trend route, like um, uh, transportation is much affected by the ocean waves, the ocean conditions. Um, so you see like in Atlantic, for example, you see ocean wave height is very high and valence, particularly in North Atlantic is very um, large. So that's actually threatening the, the safety of the ocean transportation. So here we, we build a kind of double stage uh, convolutional AST model. So we we input uh, two days um, uh, kind of uh, uh, ocean wave condition as uh, predictors. So each cell is uh, is kind of convolution ASTM, and then we'll forecast the uh, future three days um, wave, wave uh, ocean waves. And uh, uh, during the forecast, also we input forecast uh, wind, wind stress for them because wind stress has a large in, uh, influence on the uh, ocean waves. So this is our uh, kind of uh, preliminary results of the prediction scale. You see it from one day, two days, three days. So you see the Lutumi square uh, getting larger when the lead time getting uh, increased. And this is uh, uh, this is uh, ocean wave height. This is a, um, wave uh, period, the wave direction. You see, basically, the uh, the the error in in forecast North Atlantic is uh, is high as compared with the South Atlantic. So, if we average the whole Atlantic area, so you can see the root mean square error in one day and the SCC in one day and the three days. You can see even at three days, the the SCC uh, correlation scale is even still. Like above the point edge, so it's still quite high, incomparable with the uh, IFS uh, dynamic model forecast skill. And also, again, you similarly, you can see the period and the direction. The forecast skill also is, is uh, even up to three days is still above zero point six. And also, uh, we build a kind of a, a unit model to correct the wave uh, ocean wave forecast. Uh, from uh, produced by WaveWatch 3. WaveWatch 3 is a dynamic model. And we here we just uh, add a little a kind of a batch normalization a little bit. So try to better capture the, the, the features in the uh, in put, input data. So this is a kind of a typical uh, unit uh, st structure. And you and you, so this is a uh, uh, Lutumi square and collagen coefficient. You can see after the correction, the, the, the forecast error from like one day, two days, three days lead is much smaller compared with the original WaveWatch 3 forecast. Uh, and also the correlation scale is also getting higher in the, in the Western Pacific. So basically everywhere, most, I mean, most area, uh, the scale is getting better. And as we know, there's a tropical cyclone or typhoon actually can drive in big, huge waves. So also we look at the like eight um, tropical cyclone or a typhoon 
um, the, the driven uh, the, the the wave driven by eight uh, typhoons. You can see the forecast error is much re uh, reduced if uh, after IR correction. And also look at the spatial pattern. So this is uh, wave watch actually trying to uh, overestimate the uh, the wave after typhoon. And you can satellite the observation, the true observation. And our model actually uses AI5, AI5 as a ground truth to training the model. So you see, actually, the, the after correction, the model is um, forecast is getting much uh, closer to the observation. So the overestimation by the original wave watch three is, getting, is much reduced. So that's actually uh, also a very good aspect of AI. Actually, can it can help us to improve um, the model, uh, the wave, uh, the ocean wave forecast. So this kind of uh, related publication in recent years we published or submitted. Uh, some are uh, under review. So, so if you have interest, you can have a look at those uh, uh, papers. And uh, so finally, it's, you know, um, just kind of a perspective. So we know uh, in the historical, uh, his, in the history, there's two ways. One is, one is data driven. So if we have, if we provide in sufficient data, so we can actually, we can use AI kind of uh, uh, to learn everything, right? So all the principle or the relationship. So that's kind of a data-driven method. And another way is uh, we, it's kind of fluid dynamics so based on physics. So we, uh, based on Stokes-Navier uh, Stokes equation, and we, the, uh, we build a kind of uh, um, uh, partial uh, kind of uh, Kind of dynamic model, kind of numeric model, model, and to simulate the climate and the forecast climate. But uh, so this uh, basically two ways. And now actually two ways has some bottlenecks um, facing. So for like dynamic model, so we, if we want to increase the resolution, it actually call, requires a lot of uh, computation powers and the storage, right? So it's very, very expensive. And also in the dynamic model, there's uh, um, kind of uh, as I should, as I said before, there's a lot of uh, like the subgrid scale uh, phenomena cannot be uh, simulated in the model. So that should that's actually this uh, preliminarization scheme actually has a lot of problem. We don't know the physics and don't have enough um, data set to uh, to uh, to uh, 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 like uh, kind of uh, sometimes kind of uh, empirical. Um, way to set up the parameters. So lots of uh, errors in, inside the numeric model. And in, on, si on the other side, so now for, so for AI, it's a statistical way. So we, uh, with the developing of a very complex AI model, so the accuracy getting um, improved, but the, is the, the model is, is a kind of black box. So it's very hard to explain the results. And also because because the, when the training model there's no physical kind of constraint, and also because of, uh, usually the deep learning like uh, model requires a bigger data set, so that's uh, for small sample phenomena the AI cannot well uh, treat it. So that's kind of uh, two bottlenecks. Now there's kind of a tennis uh, trend to kind of merge or, or fusion of the two ways. One is for for from AI side, so they try to um, um, input kind of physical constraint in their AI model. So that can actually um, increase the exponent, uh, exp uh, make the AI model more explainable and also better to deal with a small sample of uh, data set. If for example, if you you if you put input uh, geostructural balance. So we know there's a good a relationship between pressure gradient and wind direction. So, so we can using a few uh, data set uh, points to, to train the model, right? So can learn, the model can quickly learn the, uh, the, 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 the relationship between pressure gradient and um, wind, wind direction. So, and also in in other and uh, other side is of dynamic model because the facing the bottleneck also, and we can actually use AI to to replace some expensive 
scheme like uh, solar radi uh, radiation balance, uh, radiation scheme where it costs much CPU time and also like a subgrid scale, which is very uncertain. Um, we can use AI to replace those, uh, uh, this process and getting the model much faster and better. That's, that's actually this. Uh, so finally, there's kind of a tendency to merge together and to develop kind of a hybrid model uh, uh, with uh, both AI and dynamical um, uh, rules. This kind of uh, um, kind of uh, direction, I think, is the most important maybe um, for the future. And we can see more probably yeah, we'll see more and more publications uh, works on these directions. So, and in China, it's just um, simple, uh, like also the government and agency uh, like uh, NSFC and CMA actually put a lot of uh, funding, try to uh, improve, encourage or push the application of AI to the ocean atmosphere um, uh, science. And also they build a new institutions, uh, try to, um, uh, boost these uh, um, applications, and also uh, we uh, in 2021, we uh, we uh, with uh, with some big company and operation center, we organize kind of AI in so prediction competitions, um, which actually attract uh, more than 2,000 teams from worldwide, and also we um, organize kind of special issue in climate exchange for like AI uh, try to uh, introduce kind of uh, um, the advance in the uh, climate prediction using AI. So, and also there's um, in international, there's a lot of uh, efforts uh, using AI. For example, WMO actually held um, every year kind of uh, S2S competition with AI and ECMWF, they, is they made a stretch plan using AI. So including the using AI, including many um, process in, in, in developing their forecast system. Also Navy, Navy DR, they also try to uh, put AI into digital plan, also meta um, universe, something like that, um, including the AI, UN AI for good. So that's, uh, I think this is a very uh, kind of, uh, a lot of more and more efforts in both in China and the inter international world uh, that try to push the application of AI to the earth science. That's, a, that's a, I think the future can be much influenced by the AI, not only for the forecast, but also our uh, normal life. So thank you, I'm, I'm stopping here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Xingji. Um, there is a virtual round of applause going on in, uh, in the internet. Um, the brilliant overview of all the work that you and your group have been been undertaking. Um, there's a lot, lot of it, and I, I really appreciate the the uh, the overview. Um, I, I just wanted to start the Q and A by picking up on this point, and I think you're absolutely right that um, you know these the the future is is appears appears to be. Um, at the interface of bringing the the physics together with the the data data science and the data modeling, um, and I wondered if you could talk a little bit about. Um, so you mentioned in one of your talks, in one of your your examples, um, being able to distill what the model had learned and trying to to you know impart new knowledge from the, the heat maps of the CNN, I think this was for the ENSO um, prediction task. Um, similarly for the precipitation task, are you able to do something similar? Are you able to learn, you know, where you were predicting precipitation over, summer pre precipitation over China, are you able to learn where the model is going wrong and, and perhaps why? Oh, yes, you, you are right. Actually, um... So we, we're actually doing some like a correction and this one is the AI forecast I just moment. We actually two ways. We, we develop a kind of AI model to directly forecast the rainfall. And also we develop AI model to correct the dynamic model forecast. There's two different ways. So okay. yeah, so for like for units, so you can actually, um, you can actually say, um, did do some sensitivity experiments. So you can say, um, 
you build a model with a lot of uh, like predictors, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can you can actually do sensitivity expand, but you give up a drop off one variables, and then you can see uh, what happened in your scale. So that's uh, that to tell you some importance of the each variables. This kind of a uh, simple um, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, way to estimate uh, the uh, the importance of each 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 variables and. Yeah. For model bias, same thing. So actually, we um, so model bias actually there's some we one is determinist, one is probabilist, probabilistic. So when when you're doing this, this is less net actually kind of a CNN, right? Uh, convolutional um, kind of um, um, way. So convolutional uh, uh, model can you have hidden map always, so you can mm -hmm. actually. Uh, always uh, analyze the, the, the how to say the weights or the importance of each uh, the variables in each allocations. Uh, those uh, I think the same thing. Is it depends on uh, the way uh, the method they are using. You always can try to um, kind of understand using a uh, kind of um, a ablation way or something. Uh, or sensitivity uh, way to estimate uh, the importance of, of each each variables or each bias in the model. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I think that's um, it's an interesting approach, and it's also a useful validation of the model as well. I imagine. Um, so the questions are starting to come in now online. That's fantastic. Please please feel free to keep adding uh, adding your questions there. Um, the first question that came in actually was, do you have GitHub for the rainfall prediction skill? Is is that code open source? Is that available online somewhere? Uh, which code is for our niche? Paper? For the rain, rainfall prediction skill um, is the question, but I'm not uh, sure rainfall, exactly. Which. Rainfall because still this is uh, still under, under review. So okay. after the publication, we, we, we should uh, release the code. Fantastic. That would be great. Um, okay. There's a question here um, from uh, Luz Rooney. Um, thank you for your presentation. Is AI being used for ocean wave forecasts in the Pacific and the Indian Ocean? How are forecasts in the Pacific being used as disaster prevention or preparedness in vulnerable communities? Um, how can you share this information for international collaboration? And are there any models being developed for the Arctic Ocean? Thank you. Oh, okay. There's um, a, a few questions. So there were a um, few, yeah. So okay. So I'll, I'll start with the first. So um, I, yeah, yeah. I, I can see the question. Then. Oh, you can. Oh, you can see it. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we actually we 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 did an example for Atlantic, but this the same way can be applied to um, Pacific and uh, Indian Ocean. There's no any problem. Actually, we did something for Western Pacific. So you did. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, but I did not show the result, but it's actually, it's, uh, the AI actually can, I mean, the basically the same, you can, um, you can using like uh, um, AI model or in, or maybe for different area because the um, the wave uh, features are correct, so maybe it's slightly different, you probably can, you, you need to select a different uh, predictors like wind forcing or some like tidal, if we focus a very coastal area, I probably need to include uh, tidal forcing as those things. So that's a, that's a will be, uh, so uh, the predictor selection will be depends on which area you're looking for. Are you, so that's a, but I, this, but the AI can be applied to forecast the ocean wave in everywhere. So that's no problem. Actually, we, we did a, yeah, correction for the Western Pacific. So that's a, that's a, that's a no issue, uh, no 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 issues. Um, I guess one of the challenges is is communicating that information to to vulnerable communities. I mean, an opportunity is that the AI models are much quicker than traditional numerical models, and so you know, in principle, you could you could predict this yeah faster. Um, yeah. Once you build an AI forecast model, but of course the training stages maybe cost time. Mm -hmm. And once you build it, then very fast. So you need you do need a 
uh, supercomputer, those things, right? So it's very fast. Uh, that's if say if you once you build a kind of real time forecast model, then you can, you, you probably can play yourself. If, if you have a GPU kind of um, uh, desktop, you can play yourself, or we can share in website. That's but I'm not sure how this kind of. Uh, um, at the moment, we have no such website to share the web forecast model, but we, we do share uh, climate forecast uh, information. But climate forecast, because we do like every five days or every month, so the frequency is not that high. But if web forecast for every day, so that's a lot uh, kind of routine work. So we need a lot of people to mm. maintain. So that's uh, that's uh, and, But as uh, operation, operation, that should be okay. Right. And these are these models. Are they likely to become operational anytime soon? Or will they be, you know, used by the national meteorological institutions? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. If say once the model um, AI model performance is better than the current operational model, then the operation center we select, we combine it into the operational system. My my experience is a little bit less. They're they're often a little hesitant, but but maybe that's maybe that's true. Um, step, by. So. <laughs> step by step, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, great. There's a there's a question from from Nick Brown, uh, the largest corpus of climate data that, that are available to the public for free, um, related data sets. So I guess you know if people are interested in in mining some of the the existing public data to train their own models, where where's a good place to start? Ah, I think this uh, dynamic model, uh, dynamic model forecast data, yeah, I think it's available on, on the website. So for free, actually we downloaded it from, from uh, the website. There's, uh, Is this the CMIP data? Uh, CMIP data, yeah, CMIP data, CMIP 6, data, yeah, CMIP 5, 6 data, it's, but of course it's a large data set. So we can download it from the um, IPCC website also for, Dynamic forecast model forecast data set high cost. So we can mm -hmm. also download so we we'll download the 14, including our model, we we'll download the 13 dynamic model forecast, high cost data from the website. So that's a that's a, that's a lot there are a lot of uh, data uh, available for free. There's a slightly more provocative question also from uh, from Nick who asks um, if you Given the, the success of large language models recently, like chat GPT, could we just feed feed those kind of models the 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 climate science papers that we, we currently have and ask it to ask it what the answer is, ask it to, to produce us a model or a forecast that um, that we could use. Um <laughs> now the chat GPT as uh, chat GPT has been developed quickly and uh, has chat GPT. Uh, GPT-4, I'm working for actually can make uh, figures, e image, something like that. So uh, I think, yeah, um, I, but I don't know the, the source code or what's the algorithm using the chat GPT, but it's basically the language, mm -hmm. language, uh, and then uh, LSTM, uh, transformer. So I think basically probably the, the based on transformer, uh, chat GPT is the, the key, key element is based on transformer. So we can actually use a transformer for uh, build a um, climb model, a uh, climb forecast AI model. So okay. uh, yeah, because that, this transformer kind of uh, advanced version of uh, AST, ASTM RNN. So that's uh, can better deal with uh, the, the, the memory. And the transformer yeah. includes CNN and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, attention. Attention is Yes. It's yeah. Than so that's uh, that's right. Be, I think basically this can be done using for for climate uh, forecast. So that was there's a there's a recent paper called Climax um, from a group yeah, in right. UC Irvine and uh, uh, UCLA, sorry, and, um, and Microsoft, and that uses a similar architecture that as a foundation model, and that could be a useful basis for some of these some of these other applications. Um, yes. Oh, I think we're coming to the end of our time. Um, I, I, I was itching to ask you what your ENSO prediction for this year is, given your uh, given your skillful model. But um, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a quick answer? 
Ja, ja, ja. Actually, based on the latest forecast, we forecast now the La Nina is decaying, right? We we'll forecast yeah. this year will be a Nino, and a Nino okay. probably will be a little bit quicker. So during the ball of summer, you probably can already see a, a kind of a signal in the Eastern Pacific, the warm signal, a Nino, uh, reach a Nino uh, criteria. So above the ball of five degrees or something like that. Well, that's, uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you again for the for the fascinating talk. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, the talk is available online for those of you who joined a little bit late, um, but just leaves me to thank Jingjie again. Um, and we'll be back next week. Um, I'm just checking my calendar briefly. I'm pretty sure we have a talk. Uh, sorry, in two weeks time, um, we have a talk from, uh, who's talking in two weeks time? We have, a two, we have a talk in two weeks' time on um, huge ensembles of weather forecasting. So we look forward to that. Thank you, everyone, and uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Xingjiu. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's AI for Good session. We hope you've learned something new, innovative, and engaging in today's event. We now encourage you to continue the conversation on the live video wall in the neural network. Here you can ask questions. Like and comment, share links, complete the poll, connect with interesting profiles, or speak one-on-one -on -one using the chat and video function. We invite you to explore the lobby, try the smart matching quiz, visit the virtual exhibits, poster boards, the eShop, and build your personalized AI for good program. Let's shape the future of AI for good. AI is a powerful tool. summit can help ensure that artificial intelligence charts a course that benefits humanity and bolsters our shared values.
Mm-hmm. 